I have got my gears ground smooth. So that's why I have the spreadsheet out. Because I wanted to show this guy on the internet that we have quite a bit of spectrum available to us. Band, low, high, uh, total. So for every band under six meters, so 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, 60 is a different one because 60 is five sections of 2.8 kilohertz each. Um, this is the band low edge for extras um, all throughout and the band high edge. And the difference is the number of um, kilohertz we have as radio amateurs on that band. So like 18 or so uh, 160 meters is from 1800 to 2000 megahertz or 2000 kilohertz, two megahertz. And that's 800, 900, 10 hundred, wait, one 800, 1900. That's 200 kilohertz. <laughs> Makes sense. So I add it up. You get 3,773 kilohertz, 0.1 kilohertz or 3.77 megahertz. And the average CW signal is 50 hertz give or take, and let's, let's call it 500 hertz, just to have, just so we can like spread out. If you divide, put that over there. If you divide this by this, and you do it the other way around actually, divide this by this, you can fit seven, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? 500 hertz, uh, ding us, so 0.5, kilohertz or 500 hertz is 0.5 kilohertz okay you can fit this many cw signals in the amateur radio spectrum in the um u.s generally because of this thing that is behind my head cw operation is permitted all throughout all amateur bands and including 60 meters even um and including all this green stuff and you know this is red stuff oh you think that's the cw band no that's the ritty and data band and that's an important thing to to make a distinction there are cw only portions but only if you're a technician or a novice in the u.s and those are signified by the wavy lines right so okay you can use cw from anywhere on this map um except for maybe here, fixed digital message and forwarding systems only on two, uh, 222 megahertz. So, and I didn't even include uh, VHF up, like six meters and up, I'm just talking about HF. So you get 7,546 CW signals can fit when a 500 kilohertz spacing in the US amateur radio spectrum. Why am I bringing this up? It's because I'm really, really annoyed right now <laughs> because somebody on YouTube is grinding my gears, like just just watching um, this guy making videos. I already lost the video, here it is. Um, I, I ragged on him last night, but he made another video about how FT anything sucks, it's ruining ham radio for CW ops and we need legislation to stop it, OMG. I wanna hear what he has to say. Hey, I know. Let's listen to some 40 meters CW. I was going to do some on un testing and compare the noise level of a 40 meter NFED wire um, to a 40 meter inverted V in the pine. Cool. But, but uh, I think this frequency might be in use. Might be in use. I was going to send a couple dits, or actually, I was going to send a QRL question mark. Mm hmm. See if I would be annoying anybody, uh, but you always listen. That's first. a good idea. And you always I don't listen. Want to annoy first. anybody. Mm. That is an FT4 signal, and I know it's an FT4 signal because it lasts for a certain number of seconds, and it just sounds. I you, you can. Um, I think I had WSJT. Why isn't my, for some reason today, my, this button that I used for everything to get to the freaking uh, Windows menu doesn't work today, so. 
WSJTX. I wonder if it'll send out um, FT4. So I can pull it up over here, mode FT4. If I just enable TX. I have to set it up, I guess. Tool, file, setup, 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 settings. Yeah, I don't have my call sign in there. It's on the under monitor. So if I do it now, okay. That's super loud. <laughs> so that's FT4. And I don't know how well you guys heard it because it basically blew out my eardrums. And I also know that's FT4 because 7048 is within this FT4. That's the frequency, 70475 kilohertz or 7047.5 or 7.0475 megahertz is the FT4 calling frequency. So his VFO, long tab, VFOA in lower sideband, I presume 7048, that's going to, you're going to hear this, or actually it should be upper sideband, but I think he's on lower sideband. First. I can't Repeater tell. CW. Oh, yeah, there it is. USB CW, meaning it's in the CW. So what you see on the screen is um, the carrier, like that's where the you actually, like whatever is on that frequency you'll hear. It's, I don't know, I forget how to explain it. I'll draw a diagram. But it is upper side band 7048 that is going to listen. You're going to be able to hear because somebody's going to put their frequency on their channel, their, their radio on 70475 upper side band. And so presumably you're going to hear somebody on that if they transmit within that three kilohertz spectrum because you're within three kilohertz. If you are at 704, not uh, 705, you would not hear because they would be outside of your, your band um, spread, your, your, your filter, right? So we listen to the FT4. I'm lucky. Okay. These digital idiots are... Uh, digital idiots. Much, much quieter tonight than they usually are. Um, you know, you know where they are. Yes, they're at 748-475 because that is really close to the FT4 calling frequency. Right dead nuts in the middle of the 40 meter CW portion of the band. Now this isn't the QR. This is where I was like, hang on a second. Right dead nuts in the middle of this 40 meter CW portion of the band. And so I went to my trusty handy dandy US amateur radio bands chart. And sure enough, it's pretty close to right darn in the middle of the portion where CW is most commonly used, but here's the catch. Like you can use CW everywhere, like I said before. And it is right smack dab in the middle near nearabouts of the CW only portion of the technician spectrum for the US. Okay. RP I'll let that watering slip. Hole. It's a QRP yeah. watering hole. In general, yes, uh, the convention is uh, QRP stations stay on the top end and the faster extra stations stay on the bottom end, DX and, um, and whatnot. Contesting, all of that goes out of the water because contesting. But States. P watering hole here in the States. You know what, man? This is prime, prime territory worldwide for CW. I want to know what he means and by that. The human trash. Are you serious? The human trash. Human trash. The human trash. Using FT8. Using FT8. <clears throat> on 7048. First of all, these people are doing nothing wrong. They're operating in the data portion, the RTTY and data portion of the 40 meter band. And they have all decided we've. I don't know who decides like what the what the calling frequencies are. I think the, uh, uh, JT himself and, and his crew of people who created the mode and whoever creates the mode in general 
kind of says, all right, the watering hole is like for PSK is 4070, 147070 for 20 meters. Everyone knows that. Uh, if you've been on ham radio for the last five years, when PSK was a thing, like you know, 14070 is where the PSK people hang out. There's no regis registration. There's no regulation that says you have to be on that frequency to do PSK 31. It's just a convention. Um, you can do PSK 31 anywhere in this red, you know, here, anywhere in that red spectrum. Literally, because that's what data is. PSK or RIDI, you can do it anywhere in there. Um, but by general convention, like you'll see RIDI contesters tend to not go too far down below. And you can also operate it in the phone and image portion. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I forget, but I'm pretty sure phone and image image itself envelops um, data, but I might be wrong. I need to like review that. I'm, I'm a bad ham. So, and then yeah, more, more FDA for you. So like, yes, but calling them trash, like these are people who are just, we're also hams. Like we're all hams here and we're all sharing the space. So like what I'm saying to them is share the air, and I typed there and I was like, how much spectrum is there? And how many how many stations can we fit in CW? 7,500 stations on the HF spectrum. There is enough room for you to move your VFO a few kilohertz down this way or a few kilohertz up this way so that you can test your antenna, you can call CQ there. Like, I mean, just look at it. Look at WebSDR and this, this uh, Utah WebSDR is an amazing antenna out in the middle of no, out in the middle of the desert like I'll show you a picture of it but does it look crowded to you like no this is this is pretty good normal activity for a week nine on a Tuesday night you got one two three four C to five six seven eight nine ten eleven about twelve how many more thirteen Maybe call it 20 CW stations. You got FT8 going crazy. There's FT4 going on down here. But like all you had to do is go and there will be nothing and you could do your thing right there. It just drives me up the wall. There's this thing here though that FT4 is right on top of the W1AW CW transmitter. I wonder if they thought about that. Because this is W1AW's like code practice, which is something I recommend for um, doing uh, code practice. Blue Sasquatch Productions technician wanting to upgrade to setup for about $200. Let me turn on the chat. Boop. And you want to upgrade your setup for about $200. It depends on what you want to do if you're still hanging with me. It looks like I have two viewers in Twitch still. Um, for $200, I would invest in a nice antenna that you can get up really high or build one. Um, for example, I think that it's tram something. Like this antenna here, it's it's like the budget antenna. It would not be very good um, over time. I think there's some bad reviews, but generally it's okay. It's a really good antenna. You get that up high on your top of your roof or something. Um, and get some really nice coax. Like I would definitely, I, I actually would buy this. I think I am going to buy this over a Diamond X50, which is kind of its uh, twin brother. I don't know what you'd call it, but this is a, also a good antenna. If you're willing to spend a little more, this is more robust, it'll last longer. It doesn't have that middle section. Generally, you won't really notice the difference in, in gain. Like it's four and a half dB on two meters. This is, 6 dbd gain on vhf and so because it's two sections so it's a little taller um i would recommend this or this whichever one i think this would be cry before you buy sort of thing um but this is a little more expensive i don't have a price on here but it's around 200 dollars. what is the diamondx 50. let me turn off Going on a tangent real quick to answer a question before I um, bore you to death with my pedantic. Um, there's a mute button. Mute. Um, just hair pulling out like 
they called me trash and i'm i resent that and and as a ham you should be friendly to to your fellow ham like this is these people aren't trash anyway um do that um Diamond X50, DX Engineering sells it. I would buy it from DX Engineering if their website was working. Amazon also sells it for $104.99. So it might be pricey for your budget just because you need to also buy like a tripod, a mast of some sort, um, like a roof tripod. This is what I did at my parents' house when I was like a, a kid. I bought one of these. Uh, you drill it into the into the roof and it comes with this pitch that 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 creates a watertight seal into the roof i didn't really worry about like we didn't you don't have to worry about um drilling it into a stud because generally it's going to be pretty light and i had i had a rooftop it was on the garage roof which butted up against the main second story so i could i could basically i could bracket the post the pole i had which was a 10 foot antenna tower from Radio Shack. Oh, something like this, something like that. Yeah, this stuff right here, but 10 feet. It's just pole um, for for antennas, for, for TV antennas that I got at Radio Shack when they were still in business. So what I would do is kind of like create a, create a, Smith chart, create a, a spreadsheet of like an antenna, some poles, a tripod. What kind of thing do you want? Do you want two meters and 70 centimeters? Then you want a dual band antenna like the uh, X50 or the Tram 1480. You'll want to uh, sell Ron. F Wait a second. <laughs> they sell Ron 45 on Amazon. That's so funny. Oh wow. Uh, this is this is tower sections for like a big antenna tower that can go up to like 200 feet with guying. That's that's hilarious. It's like the standard ham radio antenna uh, tower. Uh, and then, oh, it's hundred. It's ninety four ninety nine here, so it's less than Amazon if you buy it from DX Engineering. But I think you have to pay for shipping. Fast shipping, exclusion fly. I think I don't know. Um, versus Amazon, free shipping, Prime, whatever. Uh, and then, so that's the thing. But coax, 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 coax. Your cable is really important, and this is where you really should put in some good money. What I did is, I wonder if they're still in business, Davis. RF has this direct bur burial, burial, burial. And I, I did this whole like uh, trade study of coax cables, berry flex. This is good stuff uh, that you can get 100 feet for about $95. And what you're going to want to do is, you know, pretend that you have this tower up and you need to measure out how long it's going to be or this, this pole or, or tripod or whatever you have, how long it's going to be and how that's going to be how much, and it goes to your radio and basically figure out how much coax you need to get to the antenna and to the radio because that, that's going to define a couple things. First of all, is the attenuation per 100 feet? Is the price per 100 feet? Um, this stuff is good um, because it's really similar to RG, uh, or not RG, LMR 400, which is like the standard. Um stuff the standard stuff if you will uh they they sell their own that's a little cheaper as you see here that is i don't know how much per 76 dollars per feet so that's actually not bad so you can get 100 feet for 76 dollars um, but you can also the the cream of the crop 400 lmr 400 and you can get this from Davis, or I don't know. I thought it was on D. Oh, here we go. DX Engineering. It's by Times Microwave. It's super expensive. It's super good. What is Universal Radio? DM uh, DX Engineering's website is just sluggish today. Um, LMR four hundred. So this is like money, 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 money. About the same attenuation as the other two I saw, but it probably goes for about a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars for a hundred feet. If I can find a, yeah, one dollar and twenty six cents per feet per foot, and where's the breakdown? Sold by the foot, because normally it goes lower. If I go a hundred, and a cart, few cart, come on, speed it up, DX Engineering. 
so there i guess there isn't a breakdown 126 dollars for this but you won't go you won't be sorry if you buy this cable but it can be cheaper i think davis rf is my is my go-to for like the, the vhf cable um on a budget so you got cable you got antenna you got tripod uh, for your roof or or some other sort of thing maybe mounted on the ground um something to get the antenna as, as high as possible even what you can even do is put this on a tree um because these don't have to be ground well maybe not they should be grounded they should be attached to a pole that is that is grounded because they're dc grounded and what by by that i mean the entire antenna is a dc short so it conducts lightning um, but there is matching equipment in the bottom, like a coil and, and capacitor and stuff that, um, turns it into an actual antenna. But if lightning strikes, it will be more likely to go down your, uh, down into the ground instead of down into your radio. So if you have this antenna floating, say on a tree on when a piece of string and it gets struck by lightning, your whole radio system is gone, like for certain. And I'll talk about, uh, polyphasers and protection too, um, but if you ground it to a mass that's grounded to the ground, um, then then things are better. There are things like uh, polyphasers and ice lightning arresters like this. They, they're pretty pricey, but I mean, this is better than losing your equipment to lightning. Um, I'm not learning CW today. I'm just doing ham radio review or um, ham radio talk show. Um, hey, it's a smoking ape. Uh, what's up? But this thing protects your antenna from near sh near field like lightning discharge. Not direct direct strikes, you're gone. Like everything's gonna blow up. But if a lightning strikes a tree nearby, this will shunt. It will send that current, that voltage, that that bad juice from going into your radio, and it will shunt it or, or send it to ground if it's properly grounded. I had one of these and a big ground rod at my parents' house. So things are like basically what I'm saying is things are starting to add up. You got an antenna, you got a ground wood, you got polyphasers, you got coax, you got like a thing to mount the antenna, you've got maybe a new radio, you know? <laughs> so um, the $200 goes by really quickly. Uh, so what I'm recommending is an antenna, coax, a thing to mount it, and an adapter for the Bay of Thing. Um, I would not go and buy a new ham radio because the antenna is is the game like that's what it, really what matters and when you have the budget for a new radio then you would go get a new um like a mobile radio uh for used for about probably another 200 to 250 dollars does that make sense did that answer your question so that was a lot of like blowing blah 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 but that's kind of what i did i actually had a instead of an omni i had a arrow Oh, uh, what is it called? Arrow. Um, for two meters, I had a beam antenna from Arrow. Solid element Yagi. 146.4S. I had this guy. And oh man, I had all the gain. All the gain. And it's under 100 bucks. 9.68 dBi of gain. I can, and, and what I also had was a Channel Master rotator. Rotator just like this one except it didn't have a remote control why is the chat always in the way Ugh, sorry so i had that i had a big pole i had this on a pole i had didn't have this what did i where did i put it no the i i, I think i spent probably four three three hundred fifty dollars my parents spent three hundred fifty dollars on the whole thing uh which was pretty nice and and then also the radio was a Icom V8000, and I got this because it's 75 watts. I was down it in the boonies, in a hill, in a valley, and so I needed the 75 watts plus this thing. I could hit St. Louis 60 miles away, no problem. Yeah, a whole bunch of repeaters. So, and I got this for about 200 and some change, 250, I think, uh, back in 2000 and who knows when, <laughs> like 10 years ago. So what there really needs to be, so if you've ever built a PC, you go to Reddit and you go to PC, uh, build a PC, reddit slash reddit.c. 
Reddit.com slash r slash build a PC, and they tell you how to build a PC. You ask questions, yada, 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 and there's these things. The beginner's guide, the guide to PC components, logical increments, PC part picker. So these things for building PCs are amazing because it tells you what like money do you have to game to to make a make a computer that can do gaming um and they have these things called logical increments so if you have uh, if you're destitute and you have literally no money you can only spend the minimum amount of dollars for a computer this is what you should get and this is a recommendation built by many many people it's like almost like a wiki um and then you go up and poor minimum entry level and this is like the gaming gaming uh, type things and they tell you like this is good for like gaming great for office use bad for video editing and then you get up 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 in price and they go up by like a hundred dollars every time you get up into superb and and I, this is where i built my computer is in the excellent range back in 2015 office use photo editing video editing vr gaming game streaming light you know all this stuff great what ham radio needs is this but for ham radio like that would be really cool and i think i might end up making one <laughs> like what do you what can you get what what is what am i trying to say what is the logical increments in ham radio if i have this much money what can that get me you know all the way to you know this five even this is cheap like for when you think about uh, uh no, no this is not cheap five thousand dollars is not cheap why did i say that i take that back five thousand there it is five thousand thirty seven dollars but when you think about like the the top shelf um servers and the mac pro that can be like thirty five thousand dollars five thousand dollars for like the best computer you can possibly make besides the mac pro like you know you can if you're into it you put that much money into it. Like that is something that can fly, like $5,000 can fly out of your wallet in ham radio so fast because I mean, a, a, a standard HF radio, you want about $1,000 to spend on just the HF radio um, for like a brand new one, for an antenna, for coax, for grounding and protection and all that stuff. I would probably even say $2,000. So honestly, ham radio is going to die and PC gaming is going to take over because you can just spend $2,000 and get a like God tier PC for gaming. I'm being uh, tongue in cheek there, but yeah. Um, true. Hobbies in general are expensive. My mom does jeeping um, and it's like you go out in a jeep or a truck, or a four-wheeler, and you break something, and oh, that's $3,000. Oh, and the Jeep, by the way, is $35,000. Oh, and uh, I blew a tire out. Oh, you can't even drive it on the road because it doesn't have a sway bar. <laughs> like, well, it's whatever floats your boat. And I, I do the same thing. Like, I buy dumb radio that I never, dumb radio. My wife buys me a radio that I hardly ever use. Here it is over here for my code practice oscillator behind a joke I was gonna do earlier which uh, this video is brought to you by Lysol wipes and a gallon of Germex, which by the way, I bought for only $2. Um, when did I buy it? Like four, like a month ago. And now these things go for like $50 because of coronavirus. Uh, so is the Yesu worth your price? Is the Yesu worth the price? Yesu, Yesu, um, in my opinion, and I'm going back to um, Radio Oklahoma's thing. Let me bring the chat back. Um, oh, he's up there somewhere. Yesu, so ICOM is good for HF, like the 7300, and they're good for the D-Star and, and some mobile rigs, but I really prefer Yesu for HTs, for handhelds and mobile rigs. And Kenwood, eh, not really anything. So I... I've never owned a Kenwood, but the D74 is a really good radio, and the D75, the the mobile radio, I think is the best. Actually, Kenwood's um, Kenwood D7400, seven. What is that one called? This one. Is it the D7010? This is like. What the heck is this? Come on. Just give me this. eBay. D710G. 
this is probably my favorite uh, mobile radio because it's got a huge screen. It has APRS in, in integrated GPS. It does data using some AX, using data with the AX25 protocol, aka APRS. Um, it's a very nice radio. It's very easy to use. Um, but then you have there's competitors all over. I, I really hate the microphone. If you look at the microphone, it only has those buttons. The iCom microphone is the top tier microphone because it has like every button you can imagine even for the low cost rigs like you can you can control the entire radio just from the microphone which i really like so it, it's kind of a toss-up for me like for, for what but definitely i go icom for hf um generically i think elocraft is a better radio um and flex is way cool but icom is just kind of like the leader because it's 7300 and then 7610 and I'm not sponsored. I'm not saying I'm a fanboy. It's just the way I see it. Because the the my favorite low budget HF rig, however, is not the 718. It's the FT450. Because it's got DSP. It's got all this front panel stuff. It's really, 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 really small. I mean, the VFO knob is tiny. Actually, it's my only downside. But um, compare this to the IC718, and this will go for like $450 used. The 718 goes for, I think, a little cheaper, like 350 but it's, like, kind of boring. There's nothing going on here. There's no DSP. There's there's filters. There's stuff, but, like, excuse me, drinking um, Corona. Not Corona. I'm drinking it's bubbly water. This is kind of its competitor to the 450, and it just, just doesn't compete, um, in my opinion. And then the, what does, what does Kenwood even have for HF? I don't even know. Ugh. <clears throat> yeah. So, what am I talking about? Oh yeah, I'm ranting about this guy's video. Well, I, I was about to drink to this. This is not drinkable. Leave it. Uh, you're an intelligent human being. You uh, thank you. Opinions. I am an intelligent human being. <laughs> I I don't like this at all. I I, I feel bad for ragging on uh, in nine in eight November kilo, but like you called. FT8, FT something operators trash for operating on their f the frequency that everyone has generally decided to be the FT4 calling frequency when you have so much spectrum. You have three megahertz, almost four megahertz of spectrum to hang out and do stupid chats on the way uh, to do CW. And I'm trying to learn CW and I know this because, and I, and I want to learn CW because you can fit so many people on the same frequency like FT8. But CW is in your head and that's what's cool about it. Uh so TS2000 is a I don't know why anybody would ever buy a TS2000 uh, except unless it's cheap nowadays. Um it's a radio that tried to put in literally everything and it's just kind of not good at all of them. It is a great satellite radio. So if you're into satellite radio, this is kind of the standard radio. And it, I mean it's okay. I I kind of rag on HF radios, but like generally, if you get a radio to radio, like blind comparison, they're not really going to be that much different in terms of like receiver performance, transmitter, this and that, and the other thing. I mean, in here, you have a lot more room dedicated to like the VHF, UHF, uh, all mode stuff, but like yeah, it's it's whatever you can find on eBay for really cheap if you're getting into the hobby. But if you if you're budgeting and you like have thousand dollars and you really might want to think about like what do I want the most? Do I want everything in a shack in a box? Then this is perfect. Or the 70-something, the ICOM has one, Yesu has one. So it's just it's just a bunch of research. <laughs> Corona. I got it on the mind. Yep, this, this video brought to you by Lysol. I actually cleaned my keyboard off before I started streaming. Uh, also, how do I learn CW? Oh, I was going to read this, but I... Oh, Team Exuberance. Um, I'm gonna listen to this. So Ham Talk Live is the guy who also runs the Yoda camp for Region Two. That I'm, I uh, I was on his episode one day, and said, hey, uh, he asked me, what do we need to start Yoda camp? And I'm like, I don't know. I need somebody else who who's really good at running projects. And he's like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> and he did it. And so we're doing that Yoda camp. But he's all there's also Team Exuberance, which is very similar to the Yoda's uh, youth uh, contesting program. 
where they take a, a young con- a bunch of young contesters to a big station, K3LR, and they're going to operate the CQ Worldwide WPXCW contest. Come soon. Real soon. And so am I. Maybe. I don't know. I thought that was already happened. <laughs> I don't know. So Thursday night, 9 p.m., listen to Bryant and Marty talk about that. And everyone knows Marty from the old podcast, the Phasing Line podcast, which has totally died off. We still, we recorded some episodes, but Marty never edited them. <laughs> or actually, I was going to edit them, but he never sent me his his uh, uh, audio. And I'm still waiting, Marty, if you, if you ever hear this, which I bet you won't. But... Um, him and I basically talk about like this and I need to, I know his call sign's old here, but we only had like 24 episodes. We got some pretty good stuff. Generally lasts about 30 minutes and we just do this like back and forth conversation and he interrupts me a lot. And then I say, hold up. What are you talking about? What is all this stuff you're blabbing about? Stacked Yagi's five by five, five on five on five. You know, what does this all mean? And I, you know, say, oh yeah. Uh, and we're two young people. He's 18, I'm 20-something, so. Oh, the tram antenna the for nine years. Wow. Oh, that's the... Uh, let me turn chat back on. The tram antenna from here, 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 here. Yes, here. That The number one claim that it's bad is the one of these sections here. Some some people have like a lot of problems with it, but like most of the uh, things, most of the comp, most of the good reviews are like you know this thing lasts lasts forever. But like wow, nine years is crazy. Oh, in California, that's why California it doesn't rain there. Uh, I imagine in Missouri where there's like um, ice and storms and tornadoes and whatnot, like this would last a lot less time, but. Um, they definitely recommend if it doesn't arrive cracked and broken, which, excuse me, a lot of these reviews say, you know what? I need to like, if I just did this, is this is better. I don't know if anybody can like read that. I don't know how to like stream. Honestly, I'm the worst. So but you do have to do like some ceiling. Like you, you probably want to seal these joints up really well, because uh, A zero Z Kyle Craig in here, you're very gassy tonight. It's because my fizzy water. Um, sorry. Uh, will will uh, attest to that fact that you need to seal these things up, or else water will get in and it will be a unhappy day. Because we had one, not not this exact antenna, but a very similar design with a with a joint uh, and a three radial thing that water just soaked in and, and messed everything up so okay um should i learn morse code now or am i <laughs> is everybody into this new uh format i gotta sneeze now uh oh sneeze oh coronavirus uh Oh, no, I don't have my voted sticker. I voted today. I hope you did too if you have your, your presidential primary preference Super Tuesday vote thing today. So, <sighs> no, see, time to make TikTok. Well, I did make a TikTok. You should, you should watch it, but it has music, so I won't play it. All uh, right. So, FT8 is not ruining ham radio for CW. FT8 is literally isolated to little sections which I just had pulled up, like, I just want to reiterate, here is all of the FT8, all of it, literally the entire thing takes up one single sideband signal, and all the FT4, right there, all the rest of it from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, and then some, well, to, to this point here, is for UCW operators, all of all of it, all of this, everything the light touches is the CW operator's kingdom, except for maybe this area right here. I don't know, because CW operation is permitted throughout all amateur bands, everywhere. So stop saying FT4 is killing ham radio. It's not, it's making ham radio better. It's making ham radio great again. 
M-A-R-M-A-M-A-R-G-A. -A -A. Where's my hat? <laughs> okay. Enough of this. I'm going to decode Morse code. Just gonna do the SCWO. I gotta get my practice in. Somehow. Excuse me. Again, with the burps, come on. Stop burping. <sighs> code groups mixed. Oh, not show all. Code groups mixed. Just dive right in. I didn't get the last set. It's too busy coding the J. 20.8. Real speed. Huh. Oh, 09. I just typed A. Boop. That is so, like I'm, I'm at seven words per minute. So at five, I was comfortable. And I felt like I could wait and I could decode, but now I'm at seven and it's like, oh boy, this is fast. It's fast. It's fast, man. You're not even like seeing anything here. My bad. Start over. Da 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 da. That's cute. See, I'm like. I, I struggle on like one character and we're all the way out here somewhere. Like, get my mulligan. <laughs> Some good focus there. Got my error down quite a bit. Not bad. Hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Probably if I watch another video by N8NK and he calls me trash for operating digital. <sighs> that kind of hurts. <laughs> Maybe if I drink this whole thing of hand sanitizer. I'll look like The Undertaker from WWE, and I'll also be dead. <laughs> but I won't get the coronavirus, that's for sure. If I'm dead, I won't get coronavirus. <laughs> Don't, never take my advice. Like, unless it has to do with CW. Da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Why is it that Q can never, I can never get a Q without thinking of C because CQ? I always know. Like, it just goes with C, but like, sometimes it doesn't. 
My weird or creepy talent? I no CW. No, I don't have any weird or creepy talents. I don't think I do at least. My farts really stink. <laughs> I can't. I can't see stop now. bees in here. Ah. Start over. T5E. Duh. Oh, I can't do a W, but I can I can do the loop. Um, I have a couple of friends who can do the W. What other weird, creepy talents? I used to flip my eyelids in college or in high school, but like I grew out of that because it hurts. <laughs> uh, but I'm I am ridiculously normal when it comes to weird and creepy talents because I don't have any particularly. Oh yeah, I can do that though. But my eyebrows are like blonde, so <laughs> you can't really see it. Hi, Caleb. Wanna learn Morse code with me? Nope, can't puff my neck out like a frog. I did do that once when I was blowing a balloon. I like felt this and like, it hurts so bad, like when you blow up a balloon and it's like, or you're blowing up a like an air mattress or something and you're trying to get it super puffed. It like, I felt a tearing and then things got bigger here and it really hurt and I never did that again. And so now I'm afraid to blow up balloons. Afraid, not really afraid, but I just don't do that. Or I like use a lot of jaw muscle to make it not you know do that thing how do you do that this is a ham radio morse code learning channel <laughs> if you want to do how to do the undertaker eye trick uh let's google it undertaker's eyes how to this is a video tutorial on how to roll your eyes in the back of your head like the undertaker uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to close your eyes. I'm going to show you. You close your eyes first. Okay. Before you start to group your eyes up. Now, I, I sometimes can do it without even closing my eyes, whatever. But when I first really started doing it, I had my eyes closed. And I kind of looked up as far as I could to the top of my head. So just look up to the top of your head and kind of open your eyes up just enough. And um, that's how you get it the first time around. When you really get as good as you can t to do it, you can just do it like this. I can do it like that. I see a uh, piece of your eye, though. Uh, now, when I do mine... That's how you do it. Can you sub to me yet? Can I sub to me? I should sub to me. How do I sub to myself? <laughs> one viewer watching now i'm surprised there's 112 viewers i think uh i got like boosted in the um twitch thing which is also weird because i got boosted in the tiktok thing i made two tiktoks and they got like 400 views or more than that like a thousand views and 400 likes and i i, I didn't even do nothing um no i have not done the whole twitch affiliate thing what is the whole twitch affiliate thing i how to twitch um I'm a noob. How to become a phallant. I 
affiliate. Joining the affiliate program. Can I can I earn money while learning CW? That would be great. I will quit my job if I earn money learning CW. Only if it's many hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. At least 500 total minutes, seven unique, three concurrent. I need more viewers and more followers. So yeah, follow me. Wait, I don't even know how many followers I have. Um, I don't even have a profile banner. I'm the worst. The worst. Channel, friends. Friends channel. That's where I'm at. Duh. Creator dashboard. Reach 50 followers. 328. So, yeah. I need a little bit more on the follows. <laughs> but, I mean, things are going up and up and up. If I look at my studio affiliates or affiliates uh, analytics. I also got that copyright strike removed, thank goodness. Somebody copyright strike me for bin sound uh, um, audio that is royalty free. That wasn't even the right song. Oh, you see the little blip? It's 365 days. This is when I started streaming. Whoo! It's just been rolling in, not. Um, on YouTube, I don't even, I don't have um, subscription or I don't have uh, uh AdSense or AdSense revenue. I used to make, I used to make money every like three years. I would get a check for a hundred dollars from YouTube, and I ended up making like seven hundred bucks every year. I would get about a hundred dollars, um, but then they changed the things, and you have to have at least four hundred or four thousand watch hours per year. And I only have this many, and currently going on that trend of the last like thirty last ninety days of me operating, um, five hundred sixteen. Per 90, it, it's like close, but like it's not close enough and I won't make any money um, whatsoever. And I never do advertisements or whatever, or so, unless I'm super popular. Unless I get so popular doing CW. Ugh, your boy is doing this out of his own pocket. <laughs> Stunk. Yeah, definitely won't be much money at all. All right. Well, I did Morse code officially. I did two whole operations. I should do more, shouldn't I? Man, I almost had that one, I think. 21%. Almost had it. I was, well, not even close, actually. There's one, there's one. I thought I got this one right, but I didn't. Boo. Continue training.
Boo! Terrible. Oh, I didn't even do it right. I'll take it. Take the 36% hit. The last received group, sent group. So I, I whiffed it. I didn't hear a space or I didn't copy the space correctly. Man, this is hard. It's all because of this guy is just on my mind. He's a CW operator too. So like, try to be friends. But if you call FT8 or FT operators trash, can't be my friend. Hams are not trash. Some people are trash and some people are hams. But that technically means some hams are trash, but like, come on. If you call a whole group of people, a whole group of operators who do stuff trash, then. Click. That'll take care of them. I'm the worst. I'm gonna get hate mail. Maybe my views will go up. <laughs> I don't care about views. All I care about is learning Morse code. Da da da. Wow. What is da 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 I got it. Woo! 4.2%. I'm going to go up to eight words per minute. See, so yeah, like, I just screw off and I do silly stuff. And then, oh, look, I got it. I got 90% on seven words per minute. So now I'm going to go up to eight. Effective. Submit. And see how bad it gets. Just wing it. Too far behind. Start over. Why am I doing terrible? It's not that much harder. It's not that much faster. Come on. What is that? Da 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 da. Is that one?
Oh, six. I haven't typed six in a long time. That's why it's so confusing. Hmm. Da 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 da. Come on. See, like I always thought seven would be easy, but it's not. Because it always goes with three. If there's not da 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 da. Then I'm just like, I don't know what that was. Although three, one, two, three, and four are pretty, in five, are pretty easy. Especially one through four, because I can, I can understand like anything that starts with a bunch of dits is probably a number and it's five characters. So. And then four just sounds like what we have, uh, you know, made light of early, <coughs> earlier. It's Sandstorm by Darude, or Darude by Sandstorm. <laughs> I'm an old man. I don't know my hit lingo music, whatever. I guess it's a it's a matter of luck because um, some of these are just really not clicking and then the ones before it are you know Morse Toad is my favorite app <laughs> for learning the characters uh, for sure oh um, Biden won Missouri and he's gonna win Michigan too well I mean that's not surprising but I'm kind of sad Joe Biden winning uh, a lot of the delegates today, or not delegates, a lot of the races, or a lot, a lot of the poll, a lot of the votes today. R.I.P. being a Democrat for the next four years. But if you like Trump, sex. I'll do Morse code for four years. Maybe not. <laughs> Not bad. In this last part, I started really getting into a good flow. Like, I was pulling out a letter. I think this S just kind of, boop, like, I didn't think about it. Hmm. Well, that was enough for today. Enough rambling. I really wonder if I should start a podcast, but it's because it's been a while since Marty and I have talked on the phasing line, and I always have a lot of things to say, and, and also hopefully help people, especially um, Blue Sasquatch Productions up here in the uh, earlier in the chat asking about how to upgrade from Baofeng uh, for $200. So yeah. Alright, I guess I'm going to do my homework and go to bed and do another day tomorrow. But I won't be here tomorrow because I'll be at my friend's house doing stuff that isn't CW. So, thank you for watching yet another installment of Sterling Learns Morse Code. 
Um, or actually, certainly gets better in Morse code because I'm pretty sure at this point I've learned it. I've learned Morse code. I know the code. I'm a no code ham. I mean, a, a no code ham, not a no code ham. But I'm still like, I mean, if you even can, can you look up people's uh, OTW? When was the last time I uploaded a logbook of the world? Nope, wrong button. Turn off that. I have uploaded 1,402 QSO records, uh, which is sad, which you can't see. Let me turn off the camera. Boop. <laughs> or actually turn it on and put it. Nope, wrong one. <laughs> put it here. <laughs> oh, group chat is all sad about Trump. Your wife is all sad about Trump. Um, your QSOs. Submit query most recent QSOs. Not QSLs, QSOs. Last time I had a QSL was the November 10th of last year. Here. And the reason is not because I haven't been on the radio. It's because I always operate as some other call sign. Either W0 Mike Alpha or N0 AX or W0 Echo Echo Echo. Um, I just don't have a home station. So I'm out romping around, hanging with other people, um, doing, doing ham radio, or I'm at my work thing, which is Whiskey Zero Mike Alpha. We have a nice station there. So, um, what was I going with this? Like single side band. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I hadn't, I had a thought where I was like something about CW and, and logging. I, I, oh, I don't have any CW contacts in log. A couple of people have been asking me like CADR who started this whole thing on Reddit, Catter, C-A-D-R, said, hey, uh, have you made any actual CW QSOs yet? And I'm like, besides the contest that I did? No. Let me see if you pull up the message. There. I saw you stream one contest. Have you been in any CW contacts since then? No, but... I've been decoding a lot of things, and, and I did do the contests, and, and so, uh, and, but this is the guy, or the girl, the Redditor who did it all, um, so, also, by the way, my uh, friend Tim got his uh, antenna that I sent him, I had a super gainer that was broken on the top, but his was broken on the bottom, so I was like, hey, you can have mine, because I'm not using it, I just use a tram mag mount, and I sent it to him, and he loves it, hopefully it works for him, okay, that's it, 7-3, and thanks for watching, uh, yeah, again. Oh, hey. Yes, uh, Jim, I got a bunch of emails, but one of them came in as a virus, so it didn't get sent. Um, the very last one, at least, it didn't get sent. Uh, KB9CFH. And I have not looked through them all because there were so many, and I have several other emails to attend to regarding Yoda and work and everything. So, <sighs> call it a night. Look at my stats real quick. Show stats. Nope, wrong one. Show stats. Yeah, there we go. See? Little step, little step, little step. That's progress. I like to see progress. And tonight we did... One, two, three, four, five. We did a good number, actually. Even though I rambled on for an hour and a half almost, or an hour and nine minutes, and... It's not bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we got through to eight. So hopefully we'll get past eight and on to nine next time, which will be Thursday or maybe Friday. I don't know. Nobody ever knows when my schedule is <laughs> or what my schedule is, you know? So with that, I'll say 73. Good night. Go watch other YouTube. Um, subscribe to me on the YouTube and also on TikTok. Yeah. All right. Bye. Also, don't forget, Termex. <laughs> Bye for real.